Ironically, in Florida, some of the best places to see wildlife are in artificial habitats created by large factories and power generating utilities. Water used to cool generators, especially in older oil-fired plants, flows into rivers and bays, attracting manatees seeking refuge from chilly ocean temperature. But the danger with power plants is that they're aging, and it's very likely that in the next 10 to 20 years, some of them will no longer exist. And we know we have to find viable alternatives. And we also know that we can't just shut off these power plants and expect the manatees to go someplace else. It's a serious concern. Should Florida continue to run these old, inefficient, environmentally unsound power plants, or shut them down and leave hundreds of manatees out in the cold? I don't know if anybody saw this coming. It wasn't the intention of the power plants to attract manatees. The hopeful thing, however, is that the power plants have taken responsibility for it. And it's not a situation that's easy to rectify. It's going to take some time and quite a bit of effort from the people involved to come up with a solution for shutting the plants. We have to find a way to gradually wean them from those areas onto areas that can sustain them through the winter. But how do you wean manatees off their power plant dependency? And will there be enough natural habitat for them when the power plants are gone? We simply don't know what's going to happen. And so we're um, making efforts to study habitat use and uh, removal of warm water to see exactly how the animals will, will react and where they will go. Cynthia Taylor, a field scientist with the nonprofit Wildlife Trust, is part of a team attempting to learn how manatees use the few remaining natural warm water springs. As research continues, Various imaginative strategies are being considered for creating alternative warm water sites. High-tech approaches include temporary gas-fired boilers to maintain a steady flow of warm water while plants are overhauled, or installing solar panel water heaters as permanent replacements for discontinued plants. Other things that we're looking at is identifying other places where habitat may support manatees, secondary sites, historical warm water sites that through development may have been lost and bring those back to use for the manatees. In an age when most environmental issues are complicated by disputes, this collective response to the manatee's precarious future is unusual. I think at this point the manatee community, that is the electric utilities and the regulators and the scientists and the groups like Wildlife Trust are really open to any solution at this point. And one thing I think most people do agree is that we want to try and affect their behavior, their natural behavior, as little as possible. For Assignment Earth, I'm Gary Stryker.